The number one feedback that Chinese player for Wedding Wave close beta test has been giving out is that this game feels way too similar to Genshin Impact. Now, as a YouTube channel that has been making Genshin Impact video for the past two years, and as a day one launch Genshin Impact player, I want to talk about my experience with the close beta test for Wedding Wave and if these claims are true and if Wedding Wave is just really a Genshin Impact clone. However, as a quick disclaimer though, this is not meant to bash on the game and say Wedding Wave sucks and go play Genshin Impact instead, but I think there's good reason to compare the two games. After all, they're similar and I think there are lessons that Wedding Wave can potentially learn from the mistakes or improvement that Genshin Impact has made over its development cycles. In this video, I want to focus on aspects that are either similar or different between Genshin Impact and Wuthering Wave, but most importantly is that for each item, I want to attempt to provide feedback on how Wuthering Wave could potentially improve and learn from Genshin Impact. Leave it in the comment about what you think as well for each of these items, and this is my close beta test experience as a 2 years old Genshin Impact player for Wuthering Wave. Let's get started. At the current moment, Wedding Wave really feels like 90% Genshin Impact, 10% Punishing Great Raven. Punishing Great Raven, or PGR for short, is their previous title developed by the same developer, Screw Game, and has really amazing combat and soundtrack. However, majority of the game much more reassembled Genshin Impact rather than their previous title, PGR. All the way down to the way you progress in the game, the way you level your characters, or your talent in the game, and most importantly, of course, the open world exploration. The combat in Wedding Wave is extremely good, it is really fast-paced, with a big emphasis on the player's skills. Dodging is really important, but most importantly, parrying the boss is even more important to ensure that you get proper damage uptime. Overall, it feels like it's really rewarding when you do hit your combo, and it's exactly what myself and a lot of people are probably looking for in an action RPG game. Similar to Genshin Impact, every single character comes with a skill and an ult. Your E would be your skills, and if only when you click R, that would be your ultimate ability. However, what makes Wedding Wave characters really unique, especially from one one and the other in the game is that every single characters also come with something known as their identity skills, which is their passive that essentially define how the character is played. If you're coming from Punishing Great Raven PGR, then this was referred to as core passive instead, which is again how defined every single character is being played. With every character having a unique gimmick tied to them, it overall feels a lot more involved when it comes down to playing the game. For example, Danji gimmick is that every time you cast her skills, her HP goes down, and the only way to recover your HP is to fill up the entire body by hitting the enemy and then casting a charge attack. Alto has a unique gimmick where he'll cast a window and you're actually supposed to shoot through it to make your bullets spread. Swinha has a unique mechanics where you have to hold your charge attack up to a very specific timing indicated by the bar at the very bottom. And of course, when you cast a skills, it creates this ice field. And then what you want to do is actually break the ice, which do additional damage, again, by casting your charge attack on an exact certain interval. If you cast it at the wrong timing, it's not as powerful. And just like PGR, there's also the QTE mechanics where when you switch a character, they'll actually attempt to perform a coordinated attack the moment they switch in instead, which make overall switching character in this game feel much, much, much more fluent and feels like your team is kind of working together. Character have an element tied to them, just like Genshin Impact, but unlike Genshin Impact, there's no elemental reaction, although enemy do have certain elemental resistance, but rather, element in this game kind of work with one after the other when you switch character out. What that really means is that when your energy bar is full and and you switch from a character of one element to another, there will be an additional bonus effect. If you switch from, for example, a happy character into an arrow character, then you'll get a bonus effect where it increases your skill damage by 20% for 15 seconds. And for example, if you switch from like a fusion damage characters into, let's say, a arrow damage characters, then your normal and heavy attack will be increased by 40% for 12 seconds instead. So there's some kind of elemental coordination going on, but it isn't exactly the same as elemental reaction like Genshin Impact. Overall, there's a lot that go into the combat system and it's much more in-depth than like Genshin Impact, which I can't really fully cover in this video. But what I really want to talk about in this video is all the things that are not combat. We already know that they have really good combat from their previous title, Punishing Great Raven. But of course, the biggest distinction between this game and their previous game, Punishing Great Raven, is the fact that it's supposed to be more casual friendly and it's supposed to be open world, which kind of mean lower barrier of entry. Let's talk about the open world aspect of the game, which is of course what make this title different different from their previous title, Punishing Great Raven. Wedding Wave, in terms of its open world aspect, play very similar to Genshin Impact, the way the exploration works, all the way down to the keybind is almost identical. And I think that's actually is a good thing. It allowed Genshin Impact player to easily transition into playing Wedding Wave and giving players a sense of similarity, make it a lot less scary to approach and try a new game. You know, the keybind is already the same, so there isn't a major learning curve, which of course lowered the barrier entry and encouraged more people to try their game. I think it's totally fine having 
making your game be very similar to Genshin Impact. And I think that's a really good thing for most players coming from Genshin Impact, which is either my channel or myself, as it just feels so much easier to transition. The open world exploration mostly contains the same as always, like finding chests, solving really basic puzzles, doing some challenge or mini game like hitting all the target. But there is some quality of update on top of Genshin Impact. Like for example, the characters just run a lot faster and you can wall run up wall vertically, which is super great as climbing in Genshin Impact is extremely slow and running out of stamina just to fall back down to the bottom of the wall is really, really annoying. Being able to run faster in general is just a massive quality of life improvement over Genshin Impact. In Genshin Impact, a lot of players like to pull for characters like Yalan, Sai, or Kazu simply because they have mobility skill which help them transfer in the open world. But that's become a lot less of a problem if every single Wedding Wave character can just run really fast, which also means you don't have to pull for specific characters just because they run faster and it makes no sense to begin with anyway. To be very honest, in my personal experience, exploring Genshin Impact is relatively slow and really painful, which is one of the major reasons why I just stopped exploring in Genshin Impact completely. But for Mihoyo credit, they did add a couple quality of life item update in the Sumeria region, namely those flower in the middle of the air that you can grapple onto, or some stamina flower that can recharge your stamina when you're climbing the walls. In comparison though, Wedding Wave by default start off with those quality of life items. There are a lot of grappling points all over the world, so that when you are transversing the open world, it's a lot easier because you can just grapple onto one thing after the other. It is hard for me to say if Wedding Wave just copied it from Genshin Impact, I know that's kind of a hot take, but even if they did, at least they learned it from what needed to be added to the game. So that's another good thing that Wedding Wave really have. But here is the catch. Overall, the open world exploration really play really similar to Genshin Impact. And while some people were just going to call it, it is a Genshin Impact clone, to be honest, it is. The biggest problem of all of these is that if Wedding Wave honestly just played exactly the same as Genshin Impact, then why would I not just play Genshin Impact instead? Genshin Impact is the bigger game, there's a lot more players, there's a larger history of characters, there's more stories, there's more lore, and MiHoYo have really flushed out characters, but most importantly, two to three years worth of content already sitting there waiting for you to go through. Many players already made progress in Genshin Impact, maybe even created attachment to characters characters in Genshin Impact. And people would just end up playing Genshin Impact instead if Withering Wave were just the exact same as Genshin Impact. And that's the problem. For example, the butterfly mechanics in Withering Wave work the exact same as a one-to-one -one copy of the silly mechanics in Genshin Impact. You kind of follow this thing that eventually lead you to a chest at the end of the destination. To be very honest, I've never really been a fan of the silly mechanic in Genshin Impact. It walks so slow. It is one of the classic examples of the escort mission problem. It's a thing that walks so slow that you have to wait up at every single step and it leads you to somewhere that you didn't want to be in the first place. This is of course the same problem in Wedding Wave as well since they basically are the exact same mechanics. You follow this thing that leads you to a chest and you get some amount of reward that maybe it satisfies you. I don't really enjoy the Genshin Impact mechanics to begin with and when it get ported over to Wedding Wave, I still don't enjoy it. The biggest problem here is that if I'm playing Wedding Wave, the main reason that drives me to play over Genshin Impact is because the combat is so much better. I want to play Wedding Wave for the combat aspect of the game and I don't want to do the same boring exploration shit all over again. And honestly, I wish the developer Kuro Games would just honed in on the craft of making good combat instead of just trying to make everything like Genshin Impact. I think if the game is going to differentiate itself by having better combat than Genshin Impact, then the mini games or the puzzle should be more combat focused because it is what they're good at making. Something like parry this target three times in a row, do so much damage on this target dummy, do a combo on this target dummy, juggle this enemy in the air for two seconds, dodge three times in a row perfectly. All these mini games are interesting challenges that were not present in Genshin Impact and they're a lot more combat orientated which is what the game is specialized in. And I think this will really help getting new players more familiar with the unique combat aspect of the game as well like QTEing or whatever. Another big problem from Wedding Wave exploration is that it feels really really repetitive. It just go here to clear this camp of enemy, go here and break the rock to find a chest, go here and solve this puzzle and therefore you get rewarded for a chest. Don't get me wrong, that is the 
exact same formula in Genshin Impact as well, and honestly, it is just as repetitive. But the thing that Genshin Impact has to offer is that area actually feel unique because in general, there are always one giant change of puzzle that make it memorable. Or sometimes there's secrets, sometimes there's massive lore drop, and all of these are missing in Wedding Wave, which mean that area feel extremely repetitive and they don't really offer anything different from one than the other. Genshin Impact has a lot of memorable puzzles or area that were really talked about a lot within the community. Like for example, at the top of Dragon Spine, there is this chain of long puzzle for you to unlock the domain. And at the bottom of the Dragon Spine, there is a secret vault that contains a spear for your Xiangling. These long chains of puzzles really help create memorable moments for player in Genshin Impact. And there's no better feeling than getting three large luxurious chests in Genshin Impact after solving a long series of puzzles. These really help create memorable moments for the player, but also help separate area from area because players are able to associate each area with the unique memory that they have rather than how they look. One of the most memorable area for Genshin Impact, especially for new player, was actually Runegard Island. And before I say anything else, some people might already know what I'm talking about just off the word Runegard Island. It is just an island in the middle of nowhere with four sleeping rune guard. These enemies are not hard. By today's standard, you can easily one-shot all of these enemies. But the difference is that in the beginning of the game, when player accidentally stumble upon this area, they suddenly get ambushed by four sleeping rune guard. They're like, what do I do? I'm so scared. These things one-shot me. It is just simple things like these that create really memorable moment for the player. In fact, I bet most of you who have played Genshin Impact know exactly what I'm talking about because it is exactly that memorable for all of you. I think the problem here with Wooden Wave is that each area feels so unique they don't have long chain of giant puzzles, there's no unique interaction for each area, and therefore it doesn't help create those memorable moments for the player, which in my personal opinion is a big miss if you're going to try to create an open world exploration game. Again, I don't think Wedding Wave have to go the exact same route as Genshin Impact and create these unique long form puzzles. In fact, again, I wish they would just hone in more onto their combat aspect of the game and maybe potentially go the route of Elden Ring, putting a bunch of difficult enemy in a certain area, potentially guarding some really important treasures, or a really important lore drop of the game. In Elden Ring, there is a basement where once you have go through the entire skewer, fighting all these difficult enemy, and most importantly the boss, you're rewarded with something really important. And I'm not going to talk about what it is, but if you know it, you know it. And that's exactly how you create memorable moment or area for the players. Again, I think at the current moment, the game in terms of its overall state is like 90% Genshin Impact, 10% PGR. And honestly, because I'm going to be playing this game for the combat aspect of the game, I really wish it was at least 20% PGR instead of just 10% PGR, which means 80% Genshin Impact. But still, I think that's at least a lot better and really help differentiate themselves from Genshin Impact because honestly, otherwise people will just play Genshin Impact instead. Outside of the open world exploration, there are a lot of other aspects that also reassemble Genshin Impact rather than their previous title, Punch and Great Raven, which I found to be a really interesting choice. Domain come in a three day cycle for material, with Sunday being the day that every single material drops, which means the material you need might not be available right away. And this for sure was not the case previously in Punch and Great Raven. Most importantly, though, there's no skip button in Wooding Wave. Unfortunately, I want to say not having a skip button is a really big deal. There's there's no skip button in Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail, and this is one of the biggest complaints that Genshin Impact player has. Every day people ask, when are we going to get a skip button, well knowing that Mihoyo is never ever going to add a skip button, because it is a formula that has proven itself that it already worked. Now I don't know if Wedding Wave is following the exact same thing as Hoyo, but I just want to say I'm playing this game, again, mostly for the combat aspect of the game. I can't really comment if the story is good or not because I didn't read it, and also I don't give a shit. I want to play because it has cool gameplay, maybe for a lot of people it's different, but at least for me. I wish this is skip button. It was super annoying to not have a skip button in Genshin, and it's still super annoying to not have a skip button in Withering. Other than that, in terms of your character progression, you got the pretty standard stuff across gacha game. You got the farm material to level your character's level, your weapon level, and your talent level, which are of course acquired by spending your energy system in the game, which are the crystals, which means you gotta lock in everything. Now that's pretty standard across every gacha game. The biggest one here is that during Wither Wave Beta, one of the other most common complaints is that progression feels really slow, simply because the amount you get per energy is really little, to the point where they have to just dump us with a bunch of items 
more energy in general. And even then, it still feels really difficult leveling the characters or the thing you want to level themselves. Now, I'm not too concerned about this aspect of the game, although it does require tuning, because it is one of the easiest to tune. They can just give us more material. And eventually, when the game launched, there will be events that actually reward us with material, but it's still a feedback that was really, really common from the Coast Beta test. The biggest difference between this game and other game, or well, Genshin Impact, is the ecosystem, which is your character's gear or the artifact system from Genshin Impact. You got some similar aspect like each character can use 5 pieces of Echo instead of 6 from PGR and then you got your RNG main stat and your soft stat which you have to level just like Genshin Impact. And of course this is one of the biggest pain point of artifact farming in Genshin Impact is that it is really RNG based. But the fortunate news kind of is that in Wedding Wave, Echoes are more farmable. If you farm Echoes in Wedding Wave, it's simply by killing open world monsters or even bosses. Bosses can drop Echo as well. And each time that you kill them, there is a chance that they can drop at a random rarity depending on what level your terminal is. The first Echo that you equip can also be used as a skill for your characters, aka you can actually summon the monster itself. Every single monsters have a different effect. They're more like a transformation more than a summon, but they're basically an extra attack that you can use on each character, which again, not only make the combat feel a little more unique, but also make it a lot more rewarding to farm for the right echo because you also want to use it as a summon on top of getting the right stat. But it also does mean there is another layer of RNG on top. The bright side is that this is a really good way to keep playing the game even after you're out of energy. You can keep grinding mob or even boss drop to get echo drop. And it also means that co-op content is a lot, lot, lot more meaningful in this game as you can farm with your friends to get reliably. You guys can go around and kill bosses to farm for echo drop again and again and again, which make co-op really meaningful and really fun, which I have a separate video for that coming really soon. Or maybe it was out before this. While for a lot of you, you guys might be celebrating in the comment right now saying, finally grindable artifact or echoes that help you mitigate the RNG. But to be very honest, there is still a good amount of RNG on top. But the most important one is that I'm kind of concerned on how this is going to turn out for the Eastern market, since one of the biggest reasons why Genshin Impact is super successful is the reason it doesn't have a lot of grind. Chinese player can just play their 15 to 20 minutes of Genshin Impact per day and then move on with the rest of their life. And that's just one of the biggest reasons why Genshin is super successful. Winning Wave kind of needs to grind a little bit and I'm curious how that's going to turn out for the Chinese market. I do enjoy it though, especially as a content creator which means I can stream this game for a lot longer there's a lot more to do grinding the same pieces of echo also allow you to do the tuning system which is basically done by feeding the exact same copy of an echo onto another one to get a bonus effect this is known as the resonance system from punishing great raven and I'll dive deeper into it in a different video Finally, let's talk about what a lot of you probably care to know, the gacha system in the game. Now, as a quick disclaimer, the developer has already mentioned that the gacha system or even the race is super temporary in the code beta test and is due for a massive rehaul, which I agree. The current gacha system in Wedding Wave is the exact same as Genshin Impact, which is kind of confusing because they chose that route instead of like the previous one in Punishing Great Raven. You get a soft pity at 90, which means after 90 pool, you're guaranteed a 5 star character at a 50-50 chance and then your next 90 pool is guaranteed to be the features character assuming the previous one is not the one on the features character banner. This is of course the exact same system as Kenshin Impact as opposed to the one in Punishing Great Raven. Most importantly, getting duplicate copy of the characters allow you to level character sequence which is just the constellation system from Genshin Impact. Every single character have 6 sequence and getting a duplicate allow you to unlock one of them fully which give you additional bonus effect. This is of course again not the case in their previous title Punishing Great Raven where you you get shard and you level your character from S rank to SS rank to SSX rank with duplicate instead. So again, it is interesting to see them chose the Genshin Impact constellation system over what they have previously. But again, it is something subject to change. The biggest difference in Winning Wave is that you can actually get shard as a free star drop as opposed to just useless weapon drop all the time like how Genshin Impact is. Shard can help you build toward getting 
a new characters or unlocking new sequence because sequence have micro step. Each micro step costs you maybe like three to five shard, which you can obtain again through the free star gacha or potentially through other means like event or the in-game shop. And finally, if you're curious, here's the rates of the game, which to be very honest don't really mean anything because well it is one of the easiest adjustable numbers that they can do when the game is fully released. And most importantly, it really depends on how generous they are when it comes down to handing out their premium currency. So I can't really say if this game is more gacha friendly than other gacha games on the market because there's a lot of variable that we don't know about yet. Wooden Wave have a really good combat system that I think deserve a complete separate video on its own. But the biggest problem overall is that the game right now, outside of the combat system, just really feels like Genshin Impact but worse. And I'm not saying this to hate on the game because honestly, the combat system is so good that can keep me interested on its own or even drop Genshin Impact for this game because that's exactly what I wanted for the longest time. But I can't really speak for the rest of the market. I can't really speak for the rest of the player, especially if they're trying to go mainstream. I think a 90% Genshin Impact 10% PGR split is not good enough. I think they should really try to hone in on their specialty, on the combat of the game, on doing what they're good at, and make the game feel a lot more unique than Genshin Impact because then people would just end up playing Genshin instead. As much as I would like to play this game, I think this game is not ready for release. I think there's a lot of fine tuning they have to do on a system level. There are a couple of things that are janky, but most importantly, I hope they rework certain system in the game to be a lot less like Genshin Impact and rather create their own unique mechanics or puzzles or open world exploration and stuff like that. Nevertheless, I'm super excited for this game whenever it does come out. And if you're excited as well, then let me know in the comment below. Maybe consider subscribing because this is definitely a game that I look forward to playing with all of you and potentially making content on. So uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully this didn't offend anyone, especially with the Genshin Impact comment. And potentially a fun drinking game for you guys to do might be drink every time the word Genshin Impact is said because I swear you get drunk so fast off this video so uh yeah that being said thanks for watching guys don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys all next time